Welcome to Elementary Mathematics, Parent Partnerships for Success, grades three through five. In this 15 minute session, we'll be sharing with you the different content that your students will learn this year in grades three through five, as well as some new ways in which we might approach mathematics. My name is Beth Gonzalez, and I'm the director for Elementary Math, and I have here with me one of my teammates. Thanks, Beth. My name's Kristen Brazel, and I'm one of your Elementary Mathematics Specialists for Duval County Public Schools. Today we're going to talk about the shifts in the Florida standards before we get into some specifics of what's new for your child at each grade level. Let's get started. When we talk about building skills across grade levels, we talk about thinking of math as a story, with each grade level being a new chapter in that story. So your child's fourth grade teacher is pulling from what your child learned in third grade, second, first, and even kindergarten in order to teach new skills. No longer are skills taught in isolation. When we talk about your child learning more about less, we mean that students are now learning a fewer number of topics in each grade level, but to much greater depth before moving on to the next topic. When we say that your child should learn to use math facts easily, we mean that your child becomes fluent in certain facts at each grade level. When we expect children to think fast and solve problems, we mean that it's not just important for your child to solve problems, but also to do so quickly which becomes easy when we become fluent in said facts. We expect children to really know the math and really do it. No longer is math just a series of steps to memorize in order to solve a problem. Now children dig in deep and explore why math works the way that it does. And finally, we ask children to use math in the real world by solving word problems that are applicable to their lives. Let's go on and look at more specifics. In order to meet the shifts that Kristen described, your students have the opportunity to engage in three different types of mathematical rigor on a daily basis. The first is procedural skill and fluency. Each day for a short amount of time, students are engaged in fluency activities that work on developing their number sense and ability to quickly recall facts. This is essential in supporting their ability to solve multi-step problems. Additionally, students are exposed to application problems. These are real world rich problems that help them understand why we do mathematics. For instance, on the screen, we have a problem about Helen. Helen has $42 and she needs to share it equally among her seven grandchildren. This helps students see and understand the reason that we do division. Finally, students have the opportunity to engage in mathematics to develop conceptual understanding. We want students to understand the why behind math. We start with concrete objects such as manipulatives. So for instance, in primary grade, students will work with cubes to represent a certain number. Then we'll move them to representing those cubes pictorially and ultimately with numbers. That's considered to be abstract. We want students to have the opportunity to develop conceptual understanding and concepts before they make meaning of them in real world application problems. The biggest new things that your children learn in third grade are multiplication and fractions. Let's look at it a little deeper. In third grade, your children learn to represent and solve problems involving both multiplication and division. They understand the relationship between these two processes and understand that division is a missing product multiplication problem. They become fluent multiplying and dividing within 100, which, mean, which means children learn their facts all the way through 10 times 10. They solve problems involving all four arithmetic operations, and they develop an understanding of fractions as numbers. You'll see on your screen the three models of fractions children are exposed to in third grade. We have the area model, which is often represented as a food model, pizza, brownies, and what have you. We also see a set model, M&Ms, Skittles, stars, circles, things like that. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, we see fractions on a number line, which helps children understand that fractions are numbers just like whole numbers. Students also begin to solve measurement problems involving liquid volumes, times, and masses of objects. And finally, students relate the concept of area to the work they did earlier in the year with multiplication and repeated addition. 
Let's talk about an example of when we would use a number bond in grade three. Here we have an application or real world problem. Three boys each have three toys. How many total toys do the boys have in all? In this case, we're trying to define the whole. We would represent that as the largest circle in our problem. And the information that the problem's giving us is about the three parts. We have three, one, two, three boys. Each of these circles represents one boy. Each boy has three toys. This represents three groups of three. Students may use a number of different strategies to solve. They may skip count by three, three, six, nine. They may automatically know already through fluency activities that three times three is equal to nine. They may also make an array of three by three to see a total of nine. Nine is our whole. Ultimately, we want students to be able to write an equation to represent the answer to the problem. So they would write three times three equals nine. This work begins in the primary grades with examples of addition and subtraction and extends into inter intermediate grades with giving us the ability to organize the information in a story problem, represent what the problem is asking, and then solve and write an equation to represent our answer. In fourth grade, children take what they learned in third grade about multiplication and fractions and build upon it. Students are still using all four operations to solve problems, both in the context of word problems and out of it. Students begin to learn how to multiply using multi-digit whole numbers. On your screen, you'll see an area model for doing that that Beth will explain in greater detail in just a moment. Students use their place value understanding to really understand why multi-digit arithmetic works the way it does. They build fractions from unit fractions. That's to say, one-third plus one-third equals two-thirds. And they do this by building upon their previous knowledge of what fractions are. They also understand decimal notations for fractions. So they understand that one-half is the same thing as five-tenths and other such instances. Let's use an area model for multiplication. Here we have 12 times 13. In order to do this, we teach students to decompose each number into its place value. So for 12, we're going to do 10 plus 2. And for 13, we're going to do 10 plus 3. In this box, we're going to do 10 times 10 equals 100. Here we're going to do 10 times 2 equals 20. Here we have 10 times 3 equals 30. And 3 times 2 equals 6. Now we can add up each of the smaller areas. 100 plus 20 plus 30 plus 6 equals 156. Students may also come to know when they see a problem like 12 by 13 that 12 times 12 equals 144. In their fluency work, this becomes a little more automatic. Once they understand that 12 times 13 is equal to 12 times 12 plus 12 times 1, which is 12, they can find the total of 156 quickly. Additionally, ultimately, students will be able to do the standard algorithm for multiplication. This is definitely the quickest and most efficient way to multiply these numbers. The area model helps them foundationally understand why this works and helps them make sense of problems. For instance, when we see 12 times 13, and we know that there's a 10 by 10 or 100 in there, we can make sense, if we get an answer like 96, that that can't be right, because our answer must be greater than 100. Your students will see this model in 
all grades 3, 4, and 5. In fifth grade, students take their knowledge of multiplication, division, and fractions even deeper. In fifth grade, they use their knowledge of the place value system to perform these operations on decimals and on fractions. They use equivalent fractions as a strategy to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. They extend their previous understandings of fractions to multiply and divide fractions. And finally, they start working with geometric measurement, understanding the concepts of volume and relating this as well to multiplication and addition. On your screen, you'll see three of the representations your child will work with frequently in grades three through five. First, you see your place value chart. This is used to demonstrate to students how 10 ones can re be regrouped into 110, how 10 tens can be regrouped into 100, and how 10 hundreds can be regrouped into 1,000. You'll see another example of the area model that Beth showed us. And finally, you'll see the tape diagram, which carries from the primary grades. This model can be used for all four functions. On your screen, you'll see how it progresses from third grade through fifth grade. In this third grade example, children are using the tape diagram to represent multiplication. In this fourth grade example, students are using the tape diagram to split a whole into equal parts. And in the fifth grade example, students are using the tape diagram to find a fractional part of a whole. On your screen, you'll see a few ways that you can help your child be successful at mathematics at home. The biggest thing you can do for your child is to talk to them about mathematics and engage them in your everyday mathematics. This can be done when at the grocery store, when cooking, when driving, anytime you're engaging in activities in the real world that involve numbers. Encourage your child when mathematics is hard. Sometimes we all wanna stop when situations get difficult, but encourage your child to keep going and persevere even when they're faced with new mathematical situations that they're uncomfortable with. And finally, when your child does find that success, celebrate with them and encourage them to be lifelong mathematicians. On our webpage, you can find resources to help you in supporting your children in school. Please go to www.duvalschools.org. Select Departments, Academic Services, and then Mathematics. The direct link can be found on your screen. We're working hard to develop resources to support you. Many of your teachers are sending home the parent letters. They can also be found in full color versions on our website. Additionally, we have a link that points to some supports for homework help, and we have some documents to describe the key grade level work. We're open to ideas to further develop this to provide additional resources that you may find helpful. Thank you so much for joining us today. We've enjoyed having the opportunity to share with you about the key changes in mathematics in grades three through five. On the screen, please find contact information for myself and my team, and please feel free to reach out to us with ideas, suggestions, questions, or concerns. Thank you so much.